that out of there. And then just dig this one. And
one more minute and we will start. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Maria Acosta and I'm your presenter for this course, COVID-19 Success and Recovery Tools tools that will help you uh, survive and perhaps even thrive through this pandemic. Best Business Practices for Financing and Accounting is hosted by Berkeley Strategy Advisors, partnered with the City of Sacramento. A little bit myself, uh, as I said, I am Maria Acosta. And uh, with all this experience that I'm gonna share with you today, provides me with the knowledge, abilities to work and assist small, medium and large businesses in their um, development and growth, especially in this uh, uh, state of the, of the of times and we're experiencing a low down economics. So this is very um, important information to share and to see if uh, we can all make it through this pandemic. I have over 30, five years experience in business economic development with emphasis in financing. I have a commercial lending experience, underwriting and bank branch manager as well. Um, shortly thereafter, I joined the federal government where I obtained the highest uh, civilian grade level in the federal government. Two of my most favorite positions were the district director of the US Small Business Administration in LA district, also uh, working for the, U for the uh, US uh, a Department of Commerce, also as a director, an area director for the Los Angeles district. Um, when I left and I retired from the federal government after 20 some years, I joined uh, uh, the lecture route with uh, USC and I lectured on accounting and financing best practices at an entrepreneurial graduate program. Uh, presently and currently I'm with, the, I'm with the California Manufacturing Technology Consulting Companies and they are funded and partnered with the U.S. Department of Commerce as well as the state of California to assist uh, manufacturers throughout the state of California to maintain their competitiveness nationwide. And that's what I have been uh, consulting with these past, these past few months and years. Thank you. Um, so I think that with this experience, uh, we can tackle, tackle some of these tools that we're going to talk about today and, and uh, perhaps uh, you could utilize some of them for your survival during this time. Okay, um, as many of you know, small business is the backbone of the economy. And, um, and as strange as this may uh, sound, um, all politicians do agree with this. They don't agree with much, but they do agree that small businesses are the backbone of the economy, okay? So 99.7 of US employer firms are small businesses. Uh, small business creates jobs. They created 1.5 million jobs annually and 64% of new jobs are created in the United States of small, small businesses. So they are the backbone. They are, where, uh, they are the ones that are hiring. They're the ones that are helping the economy grow. So it's important that uh, we do get some of this information and uh, utilize them so that we can bring back our economy as it has been in the past. Um, we're going to discuss a couple of things. We're going to... Uh, 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 we're going to have five uh, uh, sessions in, in this presentation. 
and uh, it's uh, understanding and utilizing these financials and accounting tools to survive this, pandem this pandemic. Uh, we're going to go through the importance and the value of financial statements, uh, interpreting financial statements. We're going to interpret the profit and loss, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statements. If you do not have knowledge of uh, accounting, a background of accounting or financing, I made this presentation so that we could all understand it and so that it'll benefit everyone uh, uh, at this point. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but I, I think I've made it quite self-explanatory. Uh, um, we're going to do some um, analysis and trends. And these are the tools that you're gonna be getting uh, by using your profit and loss, by using your balance sheet and by your cash flow statements. So we're gonna do projections and budgeting. I'm gonna explain the difference between um, between uh, uh, projections and budgets so that um, you'll know the purpose and, and, and the reasons why they're important to your growth. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. The purpose, uh, the purpose is uh, that your financial statements provides you with a blueprint that tells you where your company stands financially. Um, understand the purpose, know who's responsible for preparing them, and also uh, how often do they have to be prepared. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go through that and we're going to go through um, uh, the, the positions that, that you should have in your, in your accounting department. Okay, so here it is. Um, these are the positions that are responsible for providing the numbers as well as managing the money. Uh, though many companies won't have the resources to hire uh, a chief financial officer or an account in the beginning, you'll be able to, uh, you're probably gonna be doing all three of them in the onset of your business, but it's important to know that you are and they have to be, you will have to be wearing multiple hats because all these functions uh, need to be covered uh, to arrive at your financial uh, at your financial statements uh, appropriately and accurately, uh, especially if you're ever going to want to get some money and borrow money from the government. I mean, from the uh, from your from the uh, from your lender or even getting some of this uh, money that's out from the government, the SBA. So uh, all these uh, documents and tools will be important because they will be asked uh, of you to prepare and present to them. So that's your chief financial officer, your account, and your bookkeeper. And again, the odds are you'll probably be doing all three of those positions because of resources at the time. And as you grow, you will be able to, to uh, hire these three positions and others, I'm sure. Okay, so um, how often should these financials be produced? Financial uh, statements should be produced as often as relevant to management, okay? Typically, no less than a month and promptly. Um, and promptly, I mean like when the, when the month ends, that's promptly. In the past, when we didn't have online banking, we'd have to have to wait 10 to 15 days until you get your bank statements and reconcile uh, all of them. Now uh, it's online. Now you don't have to wait to do your, 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 your bank statements uh, reconciliation or your, or your credit card bank uh, uh, reconciliations. You get them online, so you should really have them. Your close uh, statements by the fifth at the latest, I believe, because um, unless you have an overwhelming of end of the month uh, journal entries and 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 uh, and areas that you have to do some uh, changes and entries, but the, the but for the most part, uh, five days to ten days will be an accurate time to um, to uh, complete your books and close them and have them ready for uh, review. By, by uh, your, and, and then also you sh and it says, uh, who should use the financial statements? Who should be made aware of them? I would share them with the people that's helping you in your business, supervisors and managers that are active uh, targeting results uh, uh, and goals of your business. Those are the people that you should be sharing it with because in the event they do ask you if they can uh, buy something or, or hire some more people, they'll know, they'll know the condition of the business not to ask or why you're gonna say no. Uh, and rightly so, they'll, they'll, they'll probably appreciate it because they understand that the financials don't, don't allow for that at this point. So uh, it's best that you share that with them because not only that, you have them, you have their support and, and, and working a little harder and making those particular investments into your business to be able to buy and purchase what they need, what the company needs. So it's best to, uh, I would say to let everybody review them, but those supervisors and managers that are active in, 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 get, in, in uh, arriving at your goals. OK, 
Okay, so um, uh, importance of value and financial, a little wrap up. Uh, when successfully creating these financial statements, um, they'll be able to take you to the next level, the business and uh, to the next level. You'll have the understanding of what's what's going to help you get uh, your business uh, to the next step. Uh, or you'll be able to buy what you need, would you be able to present new products. Uh, so with the, or conversely, if you don't, aren't making the numbers, then you'll be, you're able to make that corrections at that time to uh, reverse some products, to change some uh, 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 expenses, uh, look for new vendors, uh, look for, uh, look for uh, 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 more suppliers so that you can adjust some of that cost you're having or look for more customers. So at that time, you can do all that adjustments or without clarity, on this process, the value of any financial statements may fall short of being useful, especially when working during this economic downturn. So we have to prepare and make sure that they're on time and they're accurate. You want these financial statements to be very beneficial for you and your and your managers to make decisions uh, before it's too late, before you, you make any mistakes also. So that's... Okay, in this session, we will, this is session two, interpreting financial statements. In this session, we will review the primary financial statements as, as I had already mentioned in a few slides back. We're gonna go into the profit and loss statement. Uh, we're gonna go into the balance sheet and the cash flow. And you're gonna know the difference of, of these three. Um, many of us don't, um, don't uh, really review them, know them or have any knowledge of them, but it's important if you are running a business it's important that you do um, uh, uh, you do you do uh, uh, understand them and and know what mostly understand them, but know the purpose of them so that uh, you know where to where to get uh, what information. If you're looking for how much money that I bring in from from a particular product, then you're going to go to the profit and loss statement. If you want to know how much money and how much assets your company has, then you're going to go to the bal the balance sheet. Uh, then if you want more detailed information as to where your money went and where your money's coming from, you go to your cash flow statement. Um, because cash flow statement is on time. It's real time. So cash flow statements are, are probably one of the most important uh, documents of, of, of this uh, uh, of these three, uh, while all three are important. But the cash flow statement is something that it's uh, uh, on time and, and, uh, and you'll be able to get... Uh, information immediately more closer to actual time uh, as opposed to the profit and the balance sheet it's all condensed so it's not going to give you individual information like a cash flow statement does the cash flow statement also has been more and more uh, popular with lenders are asking for this uh, this document only because it's again it's it's uh, real time and 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 it tells you exactly where your money is coming from and exactly where it's going it's more detailed and that's what the banks want to see is more detail right now at this time so they can see your your payback ability so this this particular is very uh, very important uh, to get um, to get information more of your business and how your business is going and we'll talk more about that okay so we're going to first we're going to talk about the profit and loss statement okay the profit and loss statements it's also uh, called uh, the profit and loss it's also called statement of income or statement of operation. But for most part, people call it the PNL. Um, uh, it represents a summary of revenue and expenses, losses and net profit or loss of business during a specific period of time. Again, it's a specific period of time. Your profit and loss statement is for a 12 month period. Um, as opposed to the, to the balance sheet, the balance sheet is forever. It goes on because they had your cash uh, your cash, your inventory, your your assets, your liabilities, and your equity, and all that is all this continues on as long as you have your business. That that uh, balance sheet changes, it, but it doesn't it doesn't end at a period of time. Your profit and loss statement ends at your at your end of your fiscal year, calendar year. So it'll give you one month, two months, three years. I'll give you a total of twelve months. But it's not to say you can't use that that um, that uh, that information to uh, to uh, to carry over to the next year for uh, for um, comparisons that's really good for comparisons and and see how you did for that year so just remember that it's for a period of time uh, typically a month a quarter of a year like I say 
and, uh, and the following accounts are part of the statement. Your revenues include all sales, uh, cost of goods. They involve measuring the increase or decrease of value of inventory, which correlates with sales revenue. Um, in other words, you're gonna get sales that come in and then um, uh, that's your revenue, your sales. And then you put cost of goods, everything you paid for, for those goods and services. We'll go follow that that we're gonna show you uh, uh, an outline right now. So you're gonna have uh, your sales and you're gonna have your, your, your cost of goods minus because you're gonna pay more, you're gonna pay less. You should be paying less for your cost of goods than what money's coming in because you're, you're going to uh, price your, your product a lot higher than what you just bought it for. That's the purpose of being in business. So gross profit margin is the difference of sales minus cost of goods. That's what we just talked about, the, the cost of goods minus your revenues. That's going to be your 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 um, your cross your gross profit margin. Then you have all expenses. You have all expenses, operating and administrative expenses. So if you take that away from your gross margin uh, profit, then you're going to get a net profit, um, a net profit or a net loss. And hopefully, it's a net profit. Is the difference a gross profit margin minus your expenses? So. Um, again, that that's your that is your profit and loss statement, and um, this is a, a, a um, format of um, it's a, a not too detailed. It's very basic, and, uh, and but it gives you an information. It gives you uh, an idea what what uh, what should go in this or what goes in this in this um, in this statement. You have all your income. You have food sales, catering sales, and, and if you go down here to cost of goods, this is what you paid for, the stuff that you're selling there. Um, so cost of goods, it should be, you have you should have food purchase, just like you have there, because what you paid, what you paid will come in there. You'll be putting it in there, but what comes in, the money that comes in, it'll come through this area of your financial statement. So if you show $1,000 there and you show 500, well, at least you have 50% more of profit. So of uh, these two, so you have to identify all your products individually and then and, and identify all your, all your uh, products down here individually. So you can compare each one of them and be able to know what's going and what's not, what's not going, um, what's costing too much, what, uh, what adjustments do I have to make? So this is what's going to help you make those determinations. Okay. So then you have your total cost of goods. Um, so you can add a heck of a lot more here because uh, it's, these are just an examples. You might have uh, beverages, uh, you might have desserts or pastries. So you can add all that in this, in this uh, area and columns, okay? Then you have your gross profit. So from there you go through expenses. And again, these are only, uh, um, these are only uh, so small ideas here, but they could be more. You could have like, you could have like, um, uh, you could have like, uh, uh, repairs and maintenance, supplies, et cetera. You could, there could be a lot more information here because you normally do have more uh, expenses uh, to include here, postage, office supplies, and, uh, and equipment uh, uh, travel. So all that will come here, utilities and other expenses. So your total expenses, less uh, your gross profit will give you net income or loss, uh, loss or profit. And hopefully again, it's profit. That's what we're in business for, to make a profit. Okay, so um, this is going to be your balance sheet. Okay, this is also a very important document. The balance sheet is a reflection of the net book value. And the net book value, it's because it has your owner equity here. That's your net, book, your net uh, worth value of your business. And so it's... Um, it, uh, the report shows assets totals with liabilities and equity combined to equal the same amount. That's why they call it the balance sheet. And I'm going to give you an example of one right now. Again, it'll be a, uh, a basic one, but something for you to understand it. Um, it includes the following uh, accounts, uh, current assets that will generally convert to cash with 12, uh, within 12 months. It's like your income, inventory, uh, any of those uh, that, that will convert to, to cash in 12 months will be considered current assets. Fixed assets, such as property, equipment, and investments that have a projected useful life greater than one year, because you're not going to pay it off in one year. So it's fixed assets will stay there, and occasionally you're going to have to put them into your current uh, um, assets so that, uh, because you're going to be paying those off within a year. Um, 
uh, current liabilities are due for settlement within 12 months, something you're going to pay in 12 months. Okay, this is something that that's going to be converted to cash in 12 months. And this is current liabilities that are due for settlement within 12 months. Your long term liabilities would be like your fixed assets that you're paying that are due for a settlement beyond 12 months. So these are the ones, like for instance, if you buy a piece of equipment that costs you uh, $10,000, well, you have to divide that by 12. Uh, of course, you have to have depreciation and everything else. But to make it simple, you divide that by 12 and you have an entry in your current liabilities because you're going to pay this in 12 months. Part of this will be paid off in 12 months. So of course, this, uh, this balance here will decrease that amount that you put into current and eventually it'll decrease it completely. And of course, you have your, your uh, owner equity uh, equity that's comprises of uh, invested capital, the cumulative net profit, or loss sustained since its obsession. Now, the way that works out is I'm going to show you. There's a retained earning area in 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 this fine in this uh, in this uh, statement here, and it's down here retained earnings. Okay, here is twenty seven nine nine zero. Now, that's re retained earnings that in your balance and in your in your um um. Uh, here, let's see. Okay, um, anything that you lost here or gained here in your financial statement, say it was twelve thousand. Just make a point up here. Okay, so it goes automatically into your balance sheet right here. It goes thrown in there. So as you gain money every month, as you lose money every month, it's it generates here. That's why they say total equity capital. Okay your equity. So you have your common stock, you have your retained earnings, uh, and then it tells you total equity capital. This is what your company looks at at this point. Uh, so you have your current assets, then you have your, 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 uh, then you have your, your, uh, your property equipment and less accumulative depreciation, net fixed assets, and then you have total assets. If you notice, it's total assets, 100,017,250 1, and 117,250. It balances. That's why it's called the balance sheet. So it has to balance. And many banks, if you take the, if you bring in your financials to them, they'll ask you, do they balance? So you have to, you know, make sure it balances. Sometimes it, there's a figure out or something that didn't go right, and it should balance because if you're using a software, it would all be automatically tell you your statements are not in balance and they'll tell you to, you know, what to do. They look for some, sometimes even that some software even identifies for that, that area of concern is so that you can go back and make that adjustment. So remember total assets and total liability of capital has to, has to uh, balance to be, to be called a balance sheet. Um, so in your current liabilities, you have your notes payable, uh, current portion of your long-term debt. That's what I told you that your long-term debt, if you buy a, 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 a 10,000 piece of equipment, well, one, uh, one twelfth of that would throw it into current portion and that's what you're going to pay. Um, so you, that's what you owe there. Um, accrued payroll accounts payable, like accrued payable would be like something that you pay on a Monday that's in the next following month, but it's part of your, your pay period for the fall for the previous uh, payroll, so it's called accrued, but you got to pay it uh, for that month. Uh, accounts payable. This is all the accounts payable that you, that's outstanding. Income tax payable. Um, and let's go back here to um, we said accounts receivable. Also, this is important um, because you're showing that this is a current asset accounts receivable that someone owes uh, your customers owe you twenty eight thousand seven hundred. Well, make sure it is uh, uh, current and make sure that there are not any um, uh, delinquent accounts receivable there because if, they will check it out. If you look for a loan, they will ask you for an aging for this accounts receivable. And the, an aging, your software will have 30 day aging, uh, 60, 90, and, and plus. Um, anything over 60, I would start looking at 90. I would really start thinking whether I should be you know, putting them into collection and trying to get a quarter or 50 cents to the dollar than to just inflate your accounts receivable and they're not, uh, they're not true to what you have. So it's gives us, is this gives you a false uh, security that you have 28, but actually you might only have 15 on 30 or maybe even 60 days also. So um, 
make sure that uh, you review this, have them reviewed so that you do have up-to-date information on your accounts receivable so that you would feel this is what I can count on. When you, when you do your cash flow, you're going to need this information. You're going to see, is there, are these really accurate figures? So make sure that, that you know exactly what's in there, 30, 60, and 90, anything over than that, I would start, you know, thinking of putting them into collection. Um, okay, you have your cash and you have your total liabilities and your common stock. So again, you have your total assets of 117, 117 equals. That's good. Okay, so we're happy with that. As long as they balance, everybody's happy. I'm happy. <laughs> so uh, let's see the statement of cash flow. While the PL is considered by many to be the most critical and crucial management tools because it reveals the ability of business to generate profit or loss, if that's the case. But most likely, we want to generate profit. The statement of cash flow is utilized by most businesses as their Bible. And again, as I said, it is an important uh, tool. Um, the cash flow statement differs from the PL, primarily from adding assumptions about when the income will be received and payments made uh, uh, and made. So remember, it, while it does say it does say assumptions, um, it, it could even you know be, uh, 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 but they have to be practical. They cannot just be as, uh, loose loose assumptions. Uh, again, like for instance, you're going to have that accounts receivable. You're going to say, okay, I have a 30, 60, and 90 day accounts receivable. I have maybe 10,000 in 30 days. I have 20 and 60, and I have 30 and, and, and 90. So really assuming which one were you going to really put into your cash flow that you're going to really count on, those 30 days will be coming in. And part of your 60 days, depending how, how uh, frequent your customers are paying you. So you got to take that into consideration when you start making this cash flow statement that what is really going to come in. So it includes cash on hand, which is your bank account, uh, cash received from sales of goods and services or collections of receivables. Again, make sure they're current. Make sure they're not uh, they're not stale uh, receivables because if they're stale, they're not going to help you with your cash flow. Your cash flow will not be true to what you want it to look like. Uh, infusion of cash from loans or credit lines, sales or assets. Um, because if you sell a, a, if you sell a piece of equipment, then of course there will be an infusion of cash. Uh, cash obligations for pay down of loans, uh, loans that you're going to be paying, purchases and res reserves. This is something that if you're going to buy a piece of equipment, then it should be there in your cash flow. Okay, cash intended for owners distribution if they have uh, if they have stock options. Um, so uh, making a statement is is like I say, it's a it's a it's a it's a timely thing. It, it's actual time, um, and it should be done. Uh, especially right now, it should be done at least every week to two weeks. People are doing it every week right now. I know some clients that are doing it every week um, so that because they, are, they don't know exactly what's going on with their, with their, with their business or they're, they're losing customers, they're losing vendors, they're switching, they're switching uh, um, product, uh, inventing new products, uh, dropping products. Um, so, all the, their, their supply chain has has completely been dis, disrupted during this time. So all this has to take into consideration when making your cash flow um, uh, your cash flow statement. Okay, a company can be profitable but unable to generate sufficient cash flow to operate at that time. Okay, meaning that again, you can have all this cash looking that is coming in, but it's not coming in especially to pay your bills at that time. So it will be coming in later on. It could be cut, but at that time, it's not covering it. So that's what it says. A company can be profitable, but unable to generate sufficient cash flow to operate at that time. The cash flow statement is a tool that provides information for effective cash management. That's, uh, again, I know a lot of managers right now, owners that are, and this is really uh, 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 for this year that I've noticed a lot of my clients are asking for a weekly. Before it was maybe 15 days. Maybe uh, maybe 10, but 15 to 30 day cash flow statement. But now, because of this disruption in this economy due to this uh, uh, pandemic, 
they're requesting it a lot more frequent for purposes of managing their their cash and their operation. Without this, they really are not. They're they're working on on a, on a, on a prayer and a wing and 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 it should be something more definite. Uh, receivables and payables are crucial for cash flow, as I mentioned, in order to meet the projected cash flow. Um, they're they're crucial because again, you need to have the appropriate and the accurate count of your of your of your payables and your receivables. The statement of cash flow details where cash resources come from and how they are being used. It provides more valuable information about liquidity that can be obtained from a balance sheet and an income statement. Again, because the cash flow is going to be more detailed. It's going to be actually is going to show you. I'm getting this from this accounts receivable, you know, and I'm I'm paying this because this is what we owe right now. Well, I'm going to pay this in two weeks or one week. It's not saying this is the end of the month and this is what I have. But those are the financial statements. Your your balance sheet and your financial statement is just saying this is it. This is the end of the month. It's history already. Um, but cash flow is something that you're working immediately with. So keep that uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I'm going to show you right now a simplified example of a, a, a statement of cash flow um, that I want you to look at and take a peek at it. Again, it's a very, um, uh, it's uh, not very sophisticated. It's a very basic one, but it gives you the idea of what should be included in, 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 this, in this statement. Um, so we have, uh, again, don't forget, cash flow in and cash flow out. That's what this statement is about. What am I going to pay? Or what am I going to get in? So we have collections from customers. Again, this is your accounts receivable right here. Okay. Accounts receivable. Payments uh, uh, to suppliers, like all your vendors. So this is what you're going to pay for that period of time. Down the bottom here says end of year. It should not be end of year. It should be, you know, this could be a spreadsheet that has all the months, all the months, all the months, and then at the end of the year, here you're at. But it should really be uh, at the end of a specific period, um, in 15 days or in two weeks or something like that. So it should have a specific date. Right now, it's important, and it's crucial that you have it in, 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 in a very limited time, not wait for the end of the year. It's too late. It'll be too late. Uh, to correct it, so you're gonna your payments to suppliers will be eight thousand dollars, and um, and if you're making this for 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 um, for your manager, and if you're or if you're asking uh, someone to do it for you as an owner, then I would be very specific to qualify that. Uh, who are the suppliers are gonna pay? And that's really the uh, uh, the exercise here. When you present this cash flow to somebody, then you're gonna have your your notes. Um, that eight thousand consists of um, Edison, uh, rent, uh, uh, car repairs, uh, 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 so-and-so vendor uh, company, you know. Uh, so all that stuff should be put on that as a detail. So you'll know where your money's going. Not that just plain 8,000, but it should have a list of what you're paying. Also, the collection should have a list of where, they're, where that money's coming from so that uh, you could see that. Uh, so if you're having your accountant, your bookkeeper do this, they should give you a detailed information on where those figures are coming from. Payment of um, payments to employees, three thousand uh, dollars. That's your payroll. And uh, net cash from operating activities will be eight thousand dollars. Okay. So after all that, you have eight thousand. That's cool. Um, so um, uh, here we go. Um, cash flows from investing activities. So. Uh, the company bought a piece of equipment for six thousand uh, dollars. They apparently um, um, they purchased. Uh, they apparently they put it in credit, so six thousand dollars they paid for it. Net cash for invested activities and it is an investment. They bought an equipment. It is a piece of asset. Assets are investment. Six thousand dollars. Okay. So cash flows from financing activities, borrowing from creditors. Um, uh, they borrowed two thousand from a from a creditor and uh, issued stock one thousand and payments of dividends two thousand. Uh, so bar they borrowed some money. They they uh, uh, issued some stock and payments of dividends. Okay, so net from financing activities is one thousand dollars. So if you see the summary in the bottom of this of this of this slide, you see increase of three thousand. 
uh, they had cash of a thousand dollars. Again, I assume that they might have had a a month before that because every month 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 carries over carries over to your to your beginning uh, uh, total. So that's the beginning total of the following year. But I would say the following month, which is one thousand, that cash in of the period four thousand dollars. So that you're you're taking over four thousand. Uh, um, uh, it's going to be more money than what you uh, started with that you ended up the period before. So that's some consolation there that you could see. Okay. So that's your, that's your, um, this is a very important document, like I say. So please uh, see if there's a way that you can um, make copies of this. And I understand that on the uh, webpage, there is a, there is some, uh, 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 copies and information regarding these uh, these uh, courses that you can download and review, I guess. Okay. Okay. So let's go to, um, uh, let's go. Okay. Um, uh, a summary and uh, key concepts of these three areas we just covered. Income statements. Again, it's a summary of the firm's revenues and expenses for an accounting period. Again, monthly, quarter, or year. And then it chops off there. The balance sheet. Uh, tells the financial position of the firm at a point of time because it keeps going. Um, uh, the, the statement um, of cash flow shows the sources and uses the firm at that time, at uh, that particular time. So um, it, it'll give you um, it'll give you a, a sense of really where your money is going and where your money. This is all three uh, important. Um, it shows you some liquid liquidity, but this is the most one that's more important for liquidity. Okay, uh, so we're going to go into and uh, now doing some tools here that you're going to be extracting from these three uh, uh, these three particular um, financial statements. Okay, we look at historical perspective in order to discover trends and in order to determine if there are factors that may impact and or increase in sales or reduction and expenses. A very good way to achieve this is to convert revenues and expenses into ratios. And we're going to go through that uh, exercise in a while. Uh, we're even going to run a ratio. Ratios make it much easier to look at the historical numbers and determine if there are any anomalies. And we're going to have a lot of anomalies during this period of disruption. Um, your, your, again, your companies have been disrupted to your, your, your uh, uh, supply chain, customers, uh, products, all have been changed to accommodate uh, uh, what's going on with, with this environment of uh, the economy. So there's going to be a lot of uh, anomalies to work out. And uh, historical, the word historical is interesting because in, 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 uh, in the good old days, uh, you could use historical data last year to bring into this year. So that you say, okay, well, what am I going to do different this year? Uh, because this other year was a little better, but this year wasn't any better. But you'll have this historical, anyway, to grow from. You'll have the previous year to look back as an example of what it could be and this, what it should not be. Um, so uh, you have to make those, the, the, those the, uh, uh, decisions of which ratios you're going to use and which ones are going to benefit you based on your new the new uh, your new level of, of doing business, the new products, new uh, your new vendors, your your so all this will constitute uh, how you're going to make this decision in your budget and in your and on your projections specifically. So this is what's going to help. This is what's going to help you make those decisions. Okay, so um, we're going to start off with the analyzing trends. Okay, and that is um, and that is uh, we're going to start off with uh, with uh, revenue, sales, cost of goods. Uh, sold and expenses. So that is your profit and loss statement. Okay. So let's go with your profit and loss statements here. And let's look at this is your first trend. This is a good tool to have. Now, um, revenue sales. This is your sales for this period of time. Month one, month two, month three, and a, and your total quarter. Okay. First quarter. So 
you have, and I told you to, and I, I made it very, um, very uh, uh, clear that you should break down your 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 sales and products, your service and product line, uh, service uh, number one, product number two, product number three, product number four. Now, if you have services instead of products that you're selling, you have services. Maybe you're in the cleaning industry. You you're you're cleaning homes. You're cleaning offices. You're cleaning uh, construction buildings. Um, so all those three, you're cleaning parks. So all those three or four, you list them there individually. So you know what amount of money is coming in from those particular uh, units of revenue. It's important because from there, you're going to be checking your cost of goods. How much money did I spend on that product one, product two, product three, product four? Um, so that you can see uh, the difference if you have to stop a product uh, invent a new product or stop the cost of uh, goods there. It's getting too expensive. So there's, this is all the, um, the decisions you have to make with these uh, tools of, of, of uh, uh, trends that you're going to be assessing. So let's take a peek at this. Product number one, $6,000. Um, uh, two, month two is $4,500. And month three uh, uh, went a little up. It went down and then up again. So that that constituted 25% of the total uh, sales. Product number two, uh, 3,000, 2,000, and 2,000 went down. They only brought 12.6% uh, of the total revenue. Um, then you have product number three, um, five, four, and six. Well, it you know it went down, but back up again, like like number uh, like number one. Number four was excellent. It was four, six, and eight. It went very well. So product four, you did good on this one, 36.8% of the total revenue. So that looks good. Number four, I would continue working with that. I would I would look into product number two. Okay, product number two um, uh, is 3,000 for the first month, 2,000, and it went down. Now, is this a seasonal product? Is this a seasonal service that, that uh, that um, I, you might be cleaning uh, apartment homes or something, and, uh, or or uh, uh, hotels or something. Well, you know, um, they might, might be seasonal. Summertime, you're not going to get that much uh, services or, or products. So it could be a, 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 some some summer wear uh, that was being sold during the winter months, or vice versa. So. Um, this is has this has to be looked at as to why uh, did it only bring up 12% as opposed to the others got 25, 25, and 36. That's a big chunk. That's a good chunk of of of, uh, of your revenues. But that 12,000, that 12% needs to be looked at uh, and to see if there's some pro problems with that product. Maybe uh, instead of uh, injecting money for that product, drop it and put it into another product that goes faster and it's bringing you better revenues. So this is something that, that you have to make the assessment. This is the tool that you have to work with these trends, okay? And, and assessments, it's important um, to discuss them and go over them with your production managers and your managers, your supervisors and managers. Okay, this is it. So this is cost of goods again. Now we were talking about about um, about cost of goods uh, and the sales of this. So you could see what percentage of uh, cost of goods for the first month, the second month, the third month. Okay. So um, direct labor. These are the people that are actually working in your factory, preparing the product or cleaning services if you're doing that. So this is your direct labor. Those are the people that are, are bringing, that are working on your sales revenues, okay? So you have uh, 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, it went up a little there every month. And I would wonder why, maybe you got more products in, maybe you got more more purchase orders and that was the reason. And that's what I would look at. That, that's all I would look at is why did it go up, up and up again? Was it because of more purchase orders? And it could be. Okay, material, let's take a peek at that. If they got more labor, they should have had a higher peak in their material. So it did. It would start at three, six, and five. So yeah, their materials went up, meaning that they got more purchase orders. So their direct labor went up. So that is consistent with this here. So this is something that you got to look at and, and see if it is consistent. If it isn't, there's if this is a flip-flop, then why did we bring more people, but we didn't order much more stuff? Maybe you didn't need to order stuff. Maybe you already had it in inventory. So that's why it didn't go up. So that's something for you to think about also. Um, overhead, uh, 1,000, 1,009. Okay, overhead was was not too high. It didn't go too, it went low. 
um, for some reason, but um, that's good. Always good to have uh, your, your costs go lower, but I would look into why also just to see why this one's so high. This one was so high and then went down. All right, okay. So now you, we're gonna go to assessing uh, trends and expenses. Now these are expenses, payroll. Um, again, three and four. This has nothing to do with cost of goods. This is, a, this is for your administrative uh, employees, okay? Outside services, um, supplies. Okay, supplies. Um, it was okay. It was 1,000, 1,009. It, it stayed very um, equal. And the, the rent, 1,000, 1,000. Rent is constant. It hardly changes anything. Utilities, six, seven, and five went up a little high here. Uh, for some reason, it might have been a high summer uh, uh, or a high winter. But um, but it, it looked pretty good. Maintenance, 12, five, one. And this is what you're going to look at here. Um, okay. So, um, okay, let's go payroll first. Payroll went up, we have to figure why, you know, um, uh, your, your payroll administratively went up. So uh, did they give uh, increases or something? Um, because I, I don't see payroll, I don't see administrative payroll go so high because you get more purchase orders. Um, uh, there is a link, but not, not that constant here for two months. So I would check that out. Um, and your other place here would be your maintenance. You have a 1,200 for month one. Uh, you have 15 for month two, and then it took a, a really heavy uh, increase there for 2005. I would check that out. I would see what maintenance, what was that cause of that of that uh, steep increase? Uh, is it the same piece of equipment being um, maintained and repaired? Um, uh, 12, 15, 25, if that's the same piece of equipment, then I would start thinking maybe we need to sell it and get a new one uh, to eliminate the, uh, the monthly uh, repairs and maintenance on that. Um, I would take a peek at that and, and, and see if that's the case. Uh, if it's just um, repair and maintenance, maybe you got to check the whole um, maintenance repair objective to your, to your, for your equipment to see if there's anything really lingering there that needs, uh, that needs fixing or selling or buying. Okay, so that's something for you to look at. That's how you're going to uh, take care of your expenses uh, so that you can come up a little higher in, 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 in your position of, the, of, uh, of uh, your business right now. So um, then, we, um, then we have a summary of your P&L, okay? This is a summary of your profit and, and loss, okay? So let's go to revenues. Um, Revenues was, uh, this is for month one, month two, month three. So uh, 21, it went down a little, month two, and it and it went back to normal in, in three. So uh, so you got 61,000. Okay, so cost of goods. When uh, was uh, first month um, was, um, okay, was 48%, uh, 7, 11, and 10. So they must have gotten um, more. Uh, they should have, if the, if it went up like that, they should have had more purchase orders to justify that increase. And that's something that I, I that you as a manager would probably know if it's justifiable. If not, then there's some should be some some discussion on this. Your expenses uh, seven, uh, eight, and ten went up again. I think that sa the salaries went up. So um, uh, did they have? Uh, a, 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 a bigger outlay uh, in, in, in administrative costs. So I would look into that. Why? You know, what was it? Um, I don't, can't imagine. Month three, maybe there was an extra week on, on salaries or something. So it's something that we have to look into. But yet, bottom line, a profit of 6.8 does not look bad. Does not look bad at all. I would, I would, um, I would, uh, uh, as I've seen a lot of, um, uh, industries of profit, uh, manufacturing process products, 6.8 doesn't look bad. Um, okay, so then, so what have we learned? What did we learn on that little exercise that we just did? Um, we learned that uh, what a trend assessment was. Um, we checked out expenses, increases or decreasing and why. Are there specific areas of cost that can be controlled? We did, we talked about that piece of equipment that could be a uh, looked into and see if there's a, a need to replace it or sell it and buy another one. 
So those are decisions. And also on some of those products that um, was uh, were sold, uh, were, were, were their sales dropped considerably in those in those months, we got to check if they were uh, seasonal products. And if they were seasonal, then they have to readjust that uh, so that their cost of goods don't have to increase at that time. Or maybe they had them on, on inventory already. So these are the things you got to check out. Do you produce your products yourself or are they outsourced? Um, this is something that you have to check it out. Sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes it's, 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 it's more expensive. Uh, so if you, and also if you outsource it elsewhere outside, then you can maintain the made in America. Um, uh, so uh, it's something that you have to be proud of. I guess a lot of people want to maintain uh, uh, made in America. So they don't do outsourcing, but there's a lot of uh, outsourcing in the United States to consider, okay? Um, what potential efficiency might be uh, implemented? And we did talk about that. Um, uh, discussion on, on, on uh, making sure that you're dealing with your appropriate um, um, uh, vendors, your suppliers, your chain of uh, your supply chain, make sure that it's efficiency run and your customers are, are, are not uh, returning any product. And that's my next subject, returns, allowances and spoilage. Uh, if you're in the uh, restaurant industry, you got to be careful because spoilage can ruin your your revenue. Can really can really uh, hurt and 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 diminish uh, some of your profits there. If you don't if you don't buy uh, uh, products that don't spoil, you got to talk. Your purchasing agent that's doing the purchasing has to be aware of what they're buying. And if it's product that's moving or is a product that's not moving, it's spoiling and it's eating into your revenues. So you have to look into that. Your allowances, returns, uh, of course, you got to make sure if you're getting a lot of returns, then there's a problem. Is there a problem in the manufacturing of them or in the processing of them, in the packaging of them, um, in, 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 in shipping? Uh, so this is where you have to get the bottom line in. Why are they broken? Why are they being returned? Uh, because those allowances that are, uh, that are being taken off your revenue is costly. It's costly. Um, so uh, make sure to review that. Make sure that you have a hand on, on all products that are returned. Don't just accept it all. Return, return. It has to be looked at. It has to be assessed, analyzed, and make sure if there's no trend there um, because that's going to eat a lot of your profit. Okay? So we're going to go into... Um, we went into uh, projections. As I said, you have projections and you have budgets, okay? Financial statements provide the scoreboard that tells you where to stand, where your company is standing. And they also provide the foundation for projections, okay? Uh, for pro projecting into the future. When developing projections, start with goals of where you would like to see your business financially in five years. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't go that far out because with this, pandemic this year, I would have to see where I'm going next year and then the following year and maybe the next in five years. But I it has to be the next year and the next year. It cannot, it cannot be so extended for the five years uh, because of the disruption in, in the industries right now. Uh, you'd be better off to do it uh, uh, yearly. Projections are the foundation for managing any companies and should be developed not as a wish and they should be reality. Okay, they should be uh, and, and full reality of where you're going and where you want your, your business to go according to what's developing now. Again, your resources, your, 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 your sales, your, your supply chain, your customers, uh, your new vendors, all that has to be into this uh, foundation of, of, of your decision-making for your projection. You can't use what has happened in the past because it's, it's not people, like I say, customers are no longer there. Um, uh, many of the customers you've lost, and also, of course, your your sales are your your supply chain has changed tremendously. Your products have probably changed. So again, you got to go with what what's existing now. Okay, the difference of your projections and 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 um, and your projections represents an entity's financial position given one or more hypothetical assumption, hypothetical assumption, and often answers what if the question. But yes, they could be loose assumptions, but again, they have to be practical. They have to be very practical for you to say, yes, this is it. Um, assumptions for projections um, would mean like, I'm, I'm assuming uh, that I'm going to get um, 
uh, 30,000 accounts receivable for that period of time, okay? Or for, so you have to be more practical, but you can assume because you don't know if they're gonna come in. You just, you know, you just figure they're good customers. Okay, so budget is quantified expectations for what a business wants to achieve. It is a representation of the future's financial position and cash flow that managers, uh, uh, management wants the business to achieve. So um, this is something that that a budget is different than your than your than your projections. Okay, so your projections um, uh, uh, should start with revenues. Utilizing historical and assumption data should always be major a major factor in, in predicting future sales. Um, again, future sales um, has to be really the future because you really can it based on what we have now. So again, be realistic. Uh, products of services, an effective method to break down projected sales value into products or services. Um, operation uh, expenses, when expenses are examined and allocated accurately. Make sure that who's ever doing the books, who's ever running the, the accounting uh, software, that they are entering, allocating all expenses to the proper uh, a chart of accounts. Every software has a chart of accounts for you to work with. When you open your business, they're there. You just eliminate the ones you don't use and pick those up. Make sure that they were accurate. And when whoever's doing the uh, the accounts uh, are payable, that they are putting them into the right category, or you're not going to have accurate uh, assumptions in your uh, categorization of your expenses. Finance. Finance is based on realistic cash flow projections. Finance decisions can be made in a prioritized manner. Okay, so um, so constructing your projections allows you to play with your model. You know, you can you can go with it um, um, with uh, with whether it's it's um, it's uh, it's uh, something that it's going to really work for you as a business model in a safe environment and make sure you do that before you make a decision and not only to make a decision but before any mistakes are made so uh so that you can correct those mistakes on this uh on this projection you could see where it could be a mistake and change it at that time adjust it at that time and not wait until it's already been experienced that is the purpose of it do it and okay so let's go to your budget, okay? The budget, um, the budget is uh, to understand that budgets are the key to make things happen in financial decisions. Recognize that budgeting provides control of revenue and expenses. Um, okay, it controls it, and uh, and um, as a cash flow doesn't control it. Cash flow just tells you what you're doing and what you're going to be paid. But budgeting does control it because you're 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 up, you're budgeting for that particular expense and for that particular revenue. Okay, uh, budget uh, uh, cash flow is because it's already been done. You do it, and that's what you're going to be expecting to do. But budgeting is something that that flows with with what the operation is doing. Uh, tools for budgeting, again, it's your profit and loss statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Those are your tools. The same thing for your projections. Those are the same three uh, financial statements that are required to give you the tools to, uh, to prepare your budget. Fundamentals must be realistic, like I said, based upon historical data. Again, historical meaning, you know, not exactly, you know, you can start off with this, but see where you can go with what's going on with the environment, work with what you have, should not be ambiguous, should be based on current strategy now, rather than percentage increase or decrease over former budgets. But you can't use former budgets because it's not gonna work for next year. Always having means of tracking budgets to actual. And I'm gonna show you a, um, a, a sample right now of a budget. And, and again, it's detail one, um, but it does give you an idea of what a budget is going to look like. Um, and this is uh, your sales, which and it, it should say budgets, actual what, you're what you actually spend uh, or, or money that came in. Uh, this is what the budget for, and this is over or under. For instance, sales, they budget for 900,000. They only got 875 only, it's not bad. Um, and they were under 25,000 of budget, that's all. Um, commission. They budgeted for 10, they spent 12, so they're over 2,000. 
Okay, so this is the bottom line. Um, for money coming in, they budget nine ten. They 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 actually spent so uh, um, they were what over two hundred thousand uh, under so a total of uh, over uh, and under twenty five and two thousand. Okay, so net it out under two twenty three thousand. So here we go. Expenses uh, they expense uh, eight hundred thousand and they actually uh, spend uh, seven seventy five for sales and wages. Uh, office supplies fourteen and two, uh, the twelve. So they they under two thousand and travel and expenses. They budget for twenty five. They went twenty four. So they were under one thousand. So they're keeping within budget. They're keeping within budget. But they were uh, really high at. Uh, uh, they really saved quite a bit here. Uh, might have let out some cus uh, people or something. Um, so uh, rent always the same. And uh, total expenses, so under 28 and over uh, 1,000, so that is not bad. Okay, uh, uh, they did a good job in their in their in their in their budgeting. A little off because of this figures here, but not too not not. They, I'd rather be under uh, than over. So um, so they can always fix the the uh, under. They can always go back and adjust that for the following period. But under when when but you if you expend over it's difficult you know uh, to adjust to that. Okay, um, budgeted uh, session five. An important goal of budgeting is to create a document you can update and examine each month, like the one we just saw. Without a budget, you may not know your income is not covering your expenses until you are deep into financial debt and in trouble. Using a budget will allow you to make real time adjustments. That's what the budgets are for, rather than wait until the end of the, of the year. And there's no correction at that time. It's a loss. Okay, financial statements. Uh, and then we're going to review what we did here. Um, um, okay, so, uh, so session three, we're going to review your financial statements, such as your profit and loss, your balance sheet and cash flow, communicates the financial conditions, profitability, cash flow and performance of your business. Uh, the liquidity of your business. Uh, projection statements and budgeting can provide you with tools to survive during this pandemic and provide future growth. Um, you could uh, do a lot of uh, your projections and budgeting uh, with these tools to direct you to get into a, a better feel of your business at this point. I uh, want to thank you and and uh, and for participating in this in this course. Uh, I wish you continued luck. And if you need any questions answered, I could be contacted at 626-677-7997. Uh, and that's my uh, my email. It will be posted there on, on the web page. So um, make sure if you want to have any information, you get into uh, both the strategy advisors work page and, and, um, and look for the course that you're interested in. Thank you very much. I wish you continued success.